Hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. Today we continue our free Flutter course from Zero to Employment, and in this video we will talk about an essential element of programming, conditional operators. We will cover the IF statement and learn how it is used in the Dart language. What is an IF statement? Let's start with the basics. The IF statement allows you to execute a specific block of code only if a given condition is true. It's one of the most common and important tools in programming. The if statement takes a condition in parentheses that should return true or false. This can be a bool variable, an expression with a logical operator, a comparison operator, and so on. If the value in the parentheses is true, the code inside the curly braces will be executed. Let's look at an example with a comparison operator, comparing the variable age with 18. We'll write the code so that if age is greater than or equal to 18, it prints a message to the console. Let's run the code to check. As we can see, the message is printed to the console because the variable age is greater than 18. Now, let's change our variable age to 15 and run the code again. This time, the message is not printed to the console because 15 is less than 18. Now, let's look at the else keyword, which is used together with if. Here is how the syntax looks. The block of code inside else will only execute if the condition inside if is false. It is logical that in this construct, only one block of code will be executed, either in if or in else. Now, let's modify our code so that the opposite message is printed to the console if the condition inside if is false. Running the code again. We see that this time the message from the else block is printed to the console. Now, let's consider another variant of this construct with the else if keyword. It works as follows. First, the condition in if is checked. If it is true, it executes, and the program skips the rest of the code inside else if and else. If it is false, the program starts checking the next else if. Similarly, if the condition inside else if is true, it executes, and the rest of the code inside this construct is skipped. There can be several else ifs in one construct, but only one else. If it turns out that all ifs and else ifs have conditions that are false, the code inside else will execute if it exists. Inside each if construct, which can include several else ifs and else, only one block of code will execute. Right now, this might all seem very confusing, but with a bit of practice, you will understand this topic very well. Let's return to the code and write a new construct with if, else, if, and else. We'll check if a number is positive, negative, or equal to zero. We'll write the condition inside if to check if it is greater than zero and print the corresponding message inside the curly braces. Next, in else if, in case the condition in if is negative, we check if the number is less than zero and also print the opposite message. In other cases, if neither the first nor the second condition is true, the code in the else block will execute. We will print a message that the number is zero. Now, I suggest you complete a small practical task with a star on your own. Create an int variable with any name and value. Now, create an if construct that will determine if the number is even or odd, and print this information to the screen. Pause the video and try it. A small hint, you should use arithmetic and comparison operators. Solution. Let's move on to the correct solution. If you succeeded, great. If not, don't worry. First, we create an int variable and assign it any value. Now, we create a variable to store the remainder of dividing our variable by 2. We need to determine if it divides evenly by 2 or not. Even numbers, as we know, divide evenly by 2, while odd numbers do not. Therefore, if we check inside if whether our second variable is equal to 0, we will print a message that our number is even. 
and in other cases, using else, we will print a message that it is odd. Let's run the code and check. By the way, we don't have to use the second variable. We can perform this calculation directly in the condition. Here's how it looks. The result will be the same, and let's verify it. Today, we covered conditional constructs with if. If you find it difficult to grasp the concept, don't worry, it's absolutely normal. The main thing is not to stop and keep learning and watching the videos. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments and I will gladly answer them. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next videos.